It's Behind the Headlines on WLIWFM, our weekly chance to sit down with the award-winning journalists who cover the East End and do a deep dive into the week's headlines. I'm Joe Shaw. I'm the executive editor of the Express News Group. We publish the Southampton Press, the East Hampton Press, the Sag Harbor Express, the website 27east.com, and Express Magazine. My co-host is Bill Sutton, who is the managing editor of the Express News Group. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, everybody. Great panel this week. We have Beth Young, who's the editor of the East End Beacon. Hey, Beth. Good morning. Good morning. We have Denise Civiletti, who's the editor of Riverhead Local. Hey, Denise. Good morning. Welcome back. And you've brought along Alec Lewis, who is a staff writer for uh, the Riverhead Local. Hey, Alec, good to have you here. Thank you, Joe. How was your show, by the way? We mentioned, oh, it, we mentioned it last week on the, on the show. How did it go? Oh, the first weekend went... We went great. We uh, had three performances at the James Ford Meeting House, and um, the audiences seemed to love it. The cast was, you know, magnificent. Um, I'm the show's director. That's the uh, the Foreigner by Larry Shu, and uh, you can catch it. Um, a little plug, I guess. You can catch it uh, this weekend. Um, this will be airing on Saturday morning, so there'll be uh, two um, chances to catch it and that's uh saturday night at seven o'clock and um sunday at two o'clock and this is at um the north shore united methodist church in in wading river and it's for riverhead faculty and community theater and um you know we uh do theater and we raise money for scholarships for local kids uh in the in the schools so it's a, it's a good cause and you know lots of fun Got to give you a chance to plug that. Definitely, we're all very excited. We're all it was very, very excited. funny. I have to say, I had never seen that show before, and it was it was very funny and well done. The cast was great. That's awesome. Good luck this weekend. Hope you get a get a full house, couple of full houses. So let's dive into the news and let's talk about um, something that's going on up your way. It's uh, so I guess this this is being pitched as an agritourism project, but it's really talking about some resorts that were being proposed. Uh, on the sound. Uh, Alec, can, can you bring us up to speed? So we, we were talking before we went on the air. Where do we start with this story? What's We need to lay a little bit of groundwork probably for listeners to make sure they understand what we're talking about. So uh, I'm going to leave it to you to figure out where's the best jumping off point here to give people a little foundation to work from. Okay. I'm going to give you a little background. Um, about a year ago, um, I was going through campaign finance reports um, for the local supervisor election. And I came across, I mean, you, you see developers give to political campaigns all the time, but I came across a name I didn't recognize. And it was actually called uh, Alfred Weissman. And I was like, who's Alfred Weissman? And, and it had an address in uh, Harrison, New York, which is up in Westchester. And so I looked up, uh, you know, Alfred Weissman, and it turned out to be there was a real estate development firm called Alfred Weissman Real Estate. And um, uh, my first thought was, well, what are they interested in doing in Riverhead? <laughs> um, <laughs> so I went to their website and on the new development section of their website um, was a project called the North Fork Resort in North Fork, New York, <laughs> which um, there was a sort of like a satellite image of some land and and they pitched it as a luxury resort and spa on um on farmland in uh in the north fork you know on the north fork wine trail and um this would revive a dormant farm <laughs> it would be um farm to table you know uh a restaurant five-star restaurant a luxury resort and spa on you know beach beachfront access to the long island sound mm -hmm. and so um, I ended up uh, looking at the satellite images and it, it ended up that the farmland was in Riverhead. And so that's, I, that's shoe, le shoe leather journalism right there where, where <laughs> you where you chase down the you, you chase down the, the thread and you pull on it until something happens. Oh, there's a lot of thread to pull for the story. <laughs> um, and we, we we pulled thread. Um, so. I asked the town officials and they said, well, you know, this is something, you know, we've met with these people once or twice. Um, you know, this is something that we're considering um, doing is changing the zoning in this zoning district on, you know, along Sound Avenue um, between the Sound and Sound Avenue. Um, 
and uh, and we'd want to change that district, which is like sort of um, a low density residential district. It allows some commercial uses, um, like agricultural uses. Uses there's a lot of farmland. There's some, you know, residences there. Actually, where this resort would be, where they're planning this resort, is right next to the Willow Ponds condominium complex, which I think we'll get into that a little later. Um, but anyways, uh, they started rolling out this code in about November of last year, and um, it's been in development ever since. And so that sort of leads us. I mean, we'll get into some other dimensions of this later. But that sure. leads into know, Alec, that this was not allowed at all under the current code for that district. No, no, no. This wasn't yeah. allowed in the current clear. code. So they they, they have to, to they have to rezone. Yeah. Yes. So they have to create a, a new um, part of the code that would allow this by it would be by special permit of the town board. And basically the resorts, you'd have to make it on at least 100 acres of land and 70 percent of that land would need to be preserved for agricultural uses, um, which could be, you know, farm production, could be um, some farm processing. It could be agricultural worker housing that sort of thing. And then the other 30% would be, could be used for like resort uh, conference rooms, like the hotel, the spa Oof. amenities, like, you know, um, uh, tennis courts and, and uh, swimming pools, that sort of thing. But um, am I correct, Alec, that, that as we, as this project was being proposed for this site, that zoning doesn't exist right now in the town. Is that correct? Right. That's no. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. would have to. They would have to create an entirely not, new. Style not in that of zoning. zoning use district, Joe. I mean, there are there are okay. other zoning in other places that allow hotels, even on the waterfront kind of like, but not there. That's not that's there. Okay. The least dense zoning but, use district in the town. It's two hundred fifty thousand. It. This is this is almost creating a new zoning designation, right? No, they're amending the resident RA residence A eighty zoning use district. So, I mean, I think another important thing to point out here is, is that um, not only was that is that not currently allowed in that district, but this came about as a result of an interest expressed by a particular developer in a particular site, mm -hmm. and that's important because um, you know. They cannot, this was not part of any comp plan. The comp plan update was going on as this was happening, right? As this approach was made, this was not part of the comp plan study. Nobody had talked about this. And, you know, th this was brought up by this developer for this particular site. But, you know, you can't, by law, you can't spot zone is what that's called. You can't say, oh, we're going to change the zoning to allow this use here, Okay. So, so the town, the town thing. could, the town could say, after a study, hey, this piece of property might be perfect to do something like a resort, and so maybe that's a pro property we well, could do that. With. Study, Joe, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, the, the no, town could the, identify. I mean, their 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 argument I mean, is their, is their argument would be that they're not just changing the zoning for that one particular property. Well, that they're because creating, that's exactly that they're what they did. Zone. That's what I was about to say. What they right. actually did then was say, we're going to change the zoning, this entire zoning use district to allow this. If certain criteria are met in terms of the size of the property, that's what Alec was referring to before. And so this change would apply from the South Hold town line on the east through Baiting Hollow, all across the town's North Shore. Mm. So some of that property is already developed with other uses, like, you know, we've got a couple of different condo complexes, golf courses, just residential uses that have been there for a very long time. Right. But, you know, if they could if they could assemble, if someone could assemble par tax parcels or lots equal to 100 acres, they could be eligible for this zoning. But they've got to preserve 70 percent of that for farmland and Got conveniently it. this particular site take it from there Al. <laughs> yeah so the particular site um is 105 acres and that's convenient. so yeah <laughs> that's very convenient um, wait a minute bill wait this is good <laughs> <laughs> so um anyway we we you know we've oh, but what about the 70 acres part of that 100 acres 
It's 70 acres, part of that 100 acres? Yeah, there's farmland. There's an existing... There's farmland there. Farmland. It's uh, an existing... Um, well, I don't know if it's an operational farm right now. It might be a dormant farm. But anyway, a lot but of if, that's... But what about that farm? 70 acres is already preserved. All right, um, it's already preserved. <laughs> um, through development rights. So um, anyway, town officials introduced this. They were saying, you know... Um, you know, this is going to be a great farmland preservation tool. It'll be an economic development tool. There's a lot of worries about um, adding more children to the Riverhead Central School District. So, you know, oh, well, you know, this is a residential use and any any um, land we could take off of this to uh, off of residential uses and, and, you know, have not have residential development would be good. So they mm -hmm. thought that this would be a good solution to that, a commercial solution. But so in November, when they first sort of rolled out this code amendment, um, they like didn't mention that Alfred Weissman like had a proposal. Like we had reported that, but when the town administrators, like town planners, went to the town board, they didn't talk about the fact that this developer already had a proposal in and like uh -huh. wanted to do this. And um, you'd think that like that would be important. You'd think that maybe the developer would be invited to the work session, but that was that didn't happen at all. So that was in November. Um, a few town board meetings later in like December-ish, um, people from the Willow Ponds condominium complex um, got very upset. Uh, they came to the town board meeting. And they said, you know, well, what are you guys trying to do here? And this piece of land you know, that we reported on <laughs> that was going to be, you know, the place where they're going to make this resort. Um, you know, that's right next to them. So they're like, you know, th there's going to be impacts here. There's going to be, you know, added traffic, Sound Avenue. Mm -hmm. I mean, historically has problems at, you know, certain times in the season where the traffic backs up. And I mean, there's no shoulder to the road. There's no turning lanes on the road. And, and, you know, and the, the farmland is side. already preserved, they said. And the far... Like, and the farmland is already by the town board as a code that was going to preserve farmland. So there isn't that benefit. It's already uh, preserved. Uh, well, they don't like talking about that. <laughs> no. They don't. Well, uh, yeah. So so yeah. that that's the kind of back background with Willow Ponds Homeowners Association. They were sort of against this at this point. Um, but in February, so so after the town board sort of didn't end up um, talking about Alfred Weissman and 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 that sort of thing, I submitted a freedom of information law request. The town of Riverhead asking for correspondence between Alfred Weissman Real Estate and it, their representatives and um, town officials about the RA80 zoning district because um, mm -hmm. and amendments to that because like you know these people they got to be involved in the conversation somehow, and so we got back dozens of emails showing how. Um, documenting how the um, the company and its attorney, hired attorney, and its hired planning consultants helped the town town officials develop this code. They went back and forth and like shared Microsoft Word documents. Mm -hmm. um, they offered to you know foot the cost of developing this code. They offered to create a uh, you know. Uh, environmental assessment documents, although we were never able to obtain any environmental assessment documents that went back and forth. But like there was so much communication back and forth that this code was basically at that point, like tailor made with the input of um, of this developer. They were, well, And it's you know, fair to say it, that that was while the town made it look like they were keeping the developer at arm's length, right? The, well, at least well, publicly. Yeah, because they told the people at Willow Ponds homeowners association they told the willow ponds residents well you know that proposal has nothing to do with what we're doing here in the uh -huh. zoning district because we're the, we're amending the zoning for the whole area the whole of ra80 so you don't have a proposal North it's only mm. a concept design they said right mm. it's only a concept so this is you know this is for the whole zoning district so like you guys are jumping the gun here meanwhile this you know code was seriously developed um, in like collaboration with this. And so they wow. were sort of uh, in collaboration with this developer. So they were sort of um, trying can, to, you know, can I read something, Alan? Yeah, can I read something, ahead. please? 
This is my favorite email of all time. Alex knows what I'm going to read. But, but we got it. We got to get to recent events soon. I think. Okay. No, no, this is just too good. Come on. Where to go? <laughs> April 13th, 2023. The developer's attorney writes to Dawn Thomas. Uh, where the heck did I, I had these all in? Uh, I, I had them in chronological order. Dear Dawn, as we discussed earlier this week, our client, Alan Weissman, who's the family mm-hmm. you know, of the, the heir of Alfred, his son, I guess, has agreed to assist and fund payment for VHB Engineering, specifically, and he names a couple people, and I, to work with the town of Riverhead specifically, and he names a deputy town attorney and a planner, as to the preparation of the necessary secret analysis compliance review for TDRs and special permit amendments for agritourism due to limited town staff available, current town workloads, and time constraints. As agreed, please discuss and review the feasibility of same. If this is adv- acceptable, please advise and reconfirm same. The work scope proposal for the services required can then be specified, directed, and agreed to by the town with all concerned. So it's a, interpret it's that a retainer way. letter for crying out loud. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Basically saying you don't have the time to do it with we'll your staff, so we'll do it for you. And then what followed that email, right, Alec, were all of the conversations that you just mentioned that took place by email. But the back and forth. It had nothing yeah. to do with it. Folks. So well, what's the what's the current development now? We we had fifteen we we had to take fifteen minutes to build up because yeah, this is a complicated, <laughs> I mean look this is a complicated story and I, this is. is sort of the whole point of the show is to get behind the headlines and we're I'm doing that talking. so and no one so would now, know this could happen without the two of you and you're like yeah. so key to this and to have you both here is really wonderful so I'm glad you pointed that out Beth because I'm going to wait to the end to say that because a lot of this would not be pu- actually none of it would be public if you hadn't been digging so kudos to you for that but so what is the latest development then Alec? so um the town board was going forward with this code and it had been revised a few times the farmers wanted something you know more from it so it was revised um and so it was coming up for a public hearing um so one of two things happened this past week. Um, the first is that uh, Alfred Weissman Real Estate and their uh, officials um, went to a, a meeting with the had a meeting with the Willow Ponds um, residents, the homeowners association, and they asked um, they offered to share the use and the costs of the development's um, sewage treatment plant. Mm. So sort of asking it them, hey, you know, we're going to build this soon, hopefully, and we want to use your sewage treatment plant and we want to pay you um, money for it and, you know, to use it and upgrade it. And, you know, it'll take the cost, you know, it'll, you know, the homeowners association won't have to pay as much, you know, to manage the sewage system. And, Presumably um, a benefit for the, for the yeah. folks who live there. A, a benefit, uh, you know, that they extended to um, uh, the homeowners association, but this came at you know on the heels of um, a public hearing that was scheduled. Um, it was scheduled for next for next week for uh, you know on Tuesday, um, but it happened. It that public hearing is not going to happen anymore. Um, what, what, was the, after- what was the response from from the homeowners association to that offer? Well, um, the, hey, I, sorry, no, go, go ahead, Denise. I, I would, I would also like to point out a, a couple of other things about that offer and about the whole thing there, because, you know, they, they, they got one of the guys said, you know, we want to give you a nice fat, a big fat payment up front. Mm. Um, and then, you know, anything that needs to be done to the sewer plant, we'll share the cost with you. And so I asked, because uh, I was, you know, Alec was doing his play, so I had to cover this <laughs> night, you know, but, no, no, but so I, I asked, well, you know, what's the capacity of the plant and what, how much, how, what's, you know, what's, what's available in terms of the capacity of the plant? How many gallons? Cause that's how these plants are rated, right? Mm-hmm. It's, treating the, it's treating the sewage from this, these 
condos. It was built for these condos. So does it have capacity to handle your waste? How much waste, how much wastewater are you going to generate? And they claimed that Alfred Weissman Real Estate claimed that they didn't have the answer to either one of those questions. They had no idea. Hmm. Now, I mean, first of all, it's not hard to find that stuff out because, um, you know, there's the county um, publishes, they have like regulations and everything is a formula, you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's this kind of a use. It's so many gallons per day that you need to, you know, that's how they, that's how they size these facilities, these treatment facilities. And so, you know, you go, I mean, you know, you could Google that in 10 seconds and find out like, and figure out based on how many rooms a hotel is going to have, how many seats the restaurant's going to have. The only thing we couldn't figure out is, I mean, I couldn't determine how much the spa use would be, um, you know, would require. Mm-hmm. Because that depends on square footage, okay? And, you know, we have no idea what the square footage is yet for that. But, like, those other things, you could tell right off the bat that they would rec- they're going to generate more wastewater with just those uses than this little sewage treatment plant has. So it's going to have to be expanded, Okay. And for them to come there and say these things and not have that information honestly made me question how real this was, Mm. you know, because how could they be that, uh, you know, unprepared to have this discussion? I'm sorry. I I don't, you know. Maybe they just don't want you to know. Well, I mean, but how easy is it to find out? Like, I mean, it's, it's you know. I I think that I think the point is, is, is also the timing of this. I mean, the public hearing was set. People knew from our reporting that Alfred Weissman Real Estate wanted to do this project. They knew where it was going to go because we had reported on where it was going to go. And um, town officials had said where it was going to go. So we were able to, you know, they were sort of in that position to 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 come out and have to sort of talk to the community. Um, Like, who knows, you know, if we hadn't reported about this and hadn't found out about mm-hmm. Alfred Weissman, whether or not they would even be in the conversation or would be seen anywhere in the town. Um, now, now, do we know, Alec, why the public hearing was canceled? Yes. So uh, that comes to the other story we have this week, um, which was about um, a uh, organization um, from the James, the Greater Jamesport Civic Association um, organized a petition campaign and a letter writing campaign um, against the agritourism code. And so they did that. They started that on like Tuesday, I think, or Monday or Tuesday, they started a petition, um, you know, basically saying right to the, to the town officials, right to the town board, right to the town supervisor, right to the town clerk, say, you don't want this, you know, this is going to be, um, detrimental to the area. It's going to be traffic. You know, this is, is not properly studied. And, uh, you know, the farmland that they're trying to build this on is already preserved. I'm pretty sure that was one of the points. Um, And uh, so because of, quote, uh, the unusually high volume of opposition and commentary received on the topic by the town board, um, Supervisor Tim Hubbard announced at yesterday's work session, uh, yesterday being Thursday's work session, um, that the town board would cancel the public hearing and would instead um, sk- instead scheduled a public forum on mm. um, the agritourism code for the public mm. to uh, to come and to talk with town officials um, about the code. Um, I mean, it's clear that town officials are not abandoning the idea of adopting this legislation. It's still in the comprehensive plan, which the town board is set to adopt on Wednesday. Um, they stuck it in they- at the last minute. Yeah, mention that. Yeah. that. No, that's important because this whole mm-hmm. thing took place while the comp plan was being developed. It was not discussed, and then, like at the very end of the comp plan, uh, like the last set of draft documents, right, Alec? Yeah, the last the last few months, basically, it was yeah. it was it was stuck into. And the, this is a good idea too. Yeah, which yeah. makes it appear which makes it appear that mm-hmm. it's part of the long term plan. Exactly. And yeah. And the, and well, circumstances according, suggest otherwise. Well, according to town officials, they say that this was something that was included in the 2003 comprehensive plan, which is the current plan that the town has, which will kind of be um, 
you know, replaced it on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But that mentions um, farm vacations and the opportunity to like have a hotel on a farm and maybe have people stay there and like, you know, that sort of thing with farm vacations. But like, this is a 150 room resort. I mean, I don't know if that was contemplated as a farm vacation. Um, it just happens I would to have expect some farm land not. with it. Yeah. Did you find where, cons- the, where the 2003 plan mentions farm vacations? Like, did you actually? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it is in like the, it's in like the, you know, section about promoting agriculture and promoting, you know, agricultural tourism and, you know, this would, you know, so that's sort oh, of what look at that town, language. town officials had pointed at saying, you know, hey, this is consistent with the current comp plan when, you know, I mean, we're talking about a 150 room resort, not like the inn that is currently allowed in the RA80 zoning district. I mean, right. um, I, it's sort of a very different thing. And plus, you know, I mean, Denise can speak more about the environmental review point of it, but this is a huge change that would, you know, that takes um, a large amount of environmental review to pass. And, and you know, uh, so to get a little back on topic, you know, town supervisor Tim Hubbard, when he was talking about this, when he was announcing that the public hearing was canceled, he said, you know, some of the emails, calls, and texts that the board members had received about the legislation um, quote, reflect a misunderstanding of the intent and the extent of the proposed change. So he was basically saying, well, you know, there are some people that, that don't understand what we're trying to do here. And um, so we want we want to make this uh, forum so that people are informed about this and um, to also offer their ideas if you want, you know, how to how to preserve farmland in the town, because this is, you know, this is our solution to the farmland preservation thing, well, you know. You know, if you have issues, we want to hear your, you have ideas, we want to hear your ideas. And that was actually something that, you know, they they have sort of said, I mean, I, I would use it condescendingly to, mm. ta- you know, residents that have come up in the past and said, like, you know, this agritourism thing isn't going to be good. Like, they've been like, well, you don't have any ideas, like, about how to preserve farmland. Why are you... You just say no, no, no to everything and you don't like offer different solutions when in fact, you know, some residents and some groups that have written to the town board have, you know, said, hey, you know, you can do this instead to preserve farmland. You can Mm -hmm. use these incentives that Southhold Town has used to preserve farmland. Um, Even Riverhead Town, like met with the Southhold Town board last month because Southhold was really concerned about this and they wrote a letter to the town board saying, well, you know, this is the potential to bring a lot of traffic to the to not just your town, but to the whole region as a whole. And we need, you know, there needs to be a comprehensive study of this. And this the I did, I don't know if Southhold I don't remember if Southhold explicitly said this is gonna be a bad idea, but they were very, very hesitant the about it. Objecting to the letter, objecting to. Yeah, yeah object. Yeah. I mean, we're coming right up on gridlock season on Sound Avenue. It's. Oh, yeah. It's it's absolute gridlock up there during well, harvest time. The, they don't. So they, town, yeah. town officials have already sort of um, tried to get ahead of the arguments about, you know, about traffic because they say, well, in the Se- in the Secret Handbook in on the state's DC's website, um, hotels are only like, I, I forgot the term, but it was like a, a, a significant traffic generator or something to that effect. If they are, uh, they have 250 or more guest rooms. Um, it's part of traffic number, analysis. If they, if they yeah. Yeah. Well, by, what, what by, gonna... by a traffic analysis, like, you know, this is a secret handbook. Um, but like, you know, I mean, you know, Sound Avenue, as everybody probably here knows, is a two lane road. It does right. not have shoulders. It does not have turning lanes and is like, you know, a, prone to conge- to seasonal congestion. You and know, 150 I mean, rooms is is not a small number. Yeah. And, and, well, and I mean, you restaurant and but yeah, I mean, yeah we're, exactly. We're, you don't just have a hotel and, and and rooms, but you also have a spa and you have a restaurant. And you can, they can have weddings there as long as 
the people who are stay who are uh, staying in the people who are, the, who are having the wedding or the event are staying at the resort. You know, like there's you know there's things other than just being a hotel room. Anyway, sure. th- th- there's but, been uh, very Beth, little Beth, so far of environmental analysis. Beth. Oh. When they came to South Hole, the, the town board, members of the town board, some of them were saying, well, this will be an economic generator that will be good for the local businesses. And other members were saying it's not going to generate traffic because it's a resort, so it's a destination, so they're not going to leave. So which is it? I see. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. they have to leave the site to, to provide any kind of economic benefit for the other right. businesses. I would just like to chime in here because Alec is being very um, – uh, you know, he's giving, he's recalling, recounting for you his reporting, and and I, it's it, and that's a good thing. I'm not you know complaining about that. But there's just so much gaslighting that go, is going on with this issue and many other issues that we have seen. And I don't know if people are seeing this in other towns as much, but it's it's been a very active thing here in the town of Riverhead uh, in the last, the, the course of the last two administrations, uh, supervisor administrations. And, you know, that's going on with this thing. You know, Alec, you just said that the in that's allowed in RA 80 already, there is no in allowed in RA 80. That mm. there, that's not a permitted use. It's not a special permit use. And to my knowledge, that's not an agricultural use. It's not something that's allowed yes. or, or required to be allowed under state ag-, ag and markets law. It's not allowed under the town zoning code. I don't know about this farm vacation stuff that was, or you know, but I remember the development of the 2003 mass comp plan um, pretty, you know, pretty clearly. And I, I was reporting on it at the time. I was somewhat recently a town official at that time. And, and like, you know, I, I know the background of what went into that and what was discussed and what, you know, what got the sausage that got spit out at the end of the, you know, the, at the end of the line in that process, which was an entirely different process, by the way, than this, the process that just concluded here in Riverhead. Um, but, you know, there was no discussion of hotels or anything like that on farmland as an agricultural use. The only housing that is allowed on land that's in agricultural use and in, in agricultural districts and even on preserved farmland is agricultural worker housing, mm-hmm. which would be allowed under this code on the preserved farmland, along with a host of other agricultural entertainment and, you know, that agri-payment type of uses um, would be allowed on the farmland that's preserved in the RA80 zoning use district if this code is implemented and and they, a special permit is granted for a hotel. Um, and that's really what people have reacted to. And it's even like the fact that they call this an agritourism code or agritour, you know, and that's how it's being referred to is really just plain misleading because it's mm. not about agritourism. I don't, I, my opinion, that's the, that they're cloaking it in that language for a reason. Okay. This is about development of resorts and spas and, you know, resort hotels on the bluffs of the Long Island Sound. And that was never more clear than all you had to do is look at that promotional piece on Alfred Weissman's website, which after our reporting, they took down from their current projects. You know, um, mm. they left the link alive. I don't know if that still is, Alec, but it is. Know, Alec, <laughs> yeah, they left that link there. You can still find it on their website, just not on there, like in an obvious place. And, you know, Alec screenshot the page. You know, I mean, what they were advertising, yeah, this farm to table, it's going to be a five star Michelin restaurant that's going to be farm to table. And, you know, and the council people are like Ken Rothwell in particular is a big advocate of this. And and he, you know, he's saying that people are going to want to come and and see how farm like chefs from the city are going to want to come out here and stay here to see how farming is done. Hmm. Like, right. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know. And I, I mean, almost nobody that comes to the, the people that are coming to meetings and paying attention to this, like there's not a whole lot of like, you know, um, people putting stock in that kind of thing. But it's like gaslighting, pure and simple. And I, I you know, it's horrible, really, what's going yeah, on. It's, I think it was worth taking some extra time today to talk about <laughs> this issue. I really do. <laughs> because, because I think I think this is the kind of issue that 
to get into the details and and okay. how the reporting can affect the conversation takes some time. And I think you have to build that case. And I think this was a really interesting conversation and it, it I, demonstrates how important it is to do that kind of digging. And the research just, that Alec has done on this has just been amazing. Like it, it's been it's been amazing to watch you um, develop as a reporter uh, in, in this process and also mm -hmm. to watch you pull those threads and see what you what you got and fight the battles that we're still kind of fighting about, you know, record access issues with with this government and in, on this issue in particular. Too. Well, Absolutely. I couldn't have done it without you, Denise, you know that. And your editing and your, you know, reporting with me and your guidance is uh, indispensable. And I'd just like to plug one more thing before we go is that we have um, like a topic web page, a, a, a sort of like a tag on our website. Um, it's called Soundfront Resorts. And if you click on that, if you go on a web browser and you click on that, you can see all the articles we've written about this subject. And so anybody who really wants an in-depth um, look on, on this topic can click that and can read our articles and our coverage on it. We can, you know, we put a lot of background in our articles that we, you know, that we write recently, but there's really a lot to the subject. And I mean, I think uh, I could say we've only sort of um, skimmed the surface of what this really was um, during this conversation. But we thank you for allowing us the time. Absolutely. You talk about transparency. You know, it's a word that gets thrown around all the time. This is what transparency looks like. And it, and it isn't always voluntary. It requires real digging and holding people's feet to the fire. And um, I think that's what this was all about. Good, good conversation, I think. And this I is think behind the headline. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Beth. No, oh, you, you got to get the plug in. <laughs> Last word. Last word. Go ahead. Um, so I, I just think, you know, at one point in your reporting, I think Denise had mentioned that uh, somebody in town government said, well, this is the way codes are usually drifted. Um, this isn't, there's nothing unusual about a developer being influence, influential in this way. And I think this is just a, the mentality um, that you'll see if you go, at, you know, anywhere west of Riverhead on, on Long Island, th this is what developers expect to be able to do. And I mean, if you sit in a Suffolk County Planning Commission meeting as a reporter, they, they're shocked. They're like, we've never had a reporter here before. Be or the IDA, the Suffolk County IDA, the same way. So, I mean, this is something that the East End really has to get its head around and and you know not just riverhead everywhere on the east end the the, the developers are coming for us and mm -hmm. um we need to know how they operate and this, this is, is a great, great case example it's, it's a, a great point, point. point. yeah point. yeah absolutely this is behind the headlines on WLIWFM. I'm Joe Shaw. My co-host is Bill Sutton. We're with the Express News Group. Um, that was Beth Young, who's the editor of the East End Beacon. We also have Denise Civiletti, who's the editor of Riverhead Local. And we have Alec Lewis, who is a staff writer at Riverhead Local. Beth, let's talk. Um, you had uh, over in Southhold um, some proposals. Uh, they've, they've put together some regulations now on short-term rentals. Talk about that a little bit. This is this is a, an issue that, that matters a lot in all of the East End communities. I think it's a little different in each community, but what's what's uh, what's Southhold's focus right now? Yes, yeah, so, so Southhold uh, put together a task force at the beginning of this year uh, to look at how they should change their short-term rental regulations. Uh, since 2015, they've banned rentals of less than 15, 14 days, but uh, the enforcement mechanisms are really inadequate. Uh, there, there are almost a thousand active short-term rental listings on uh, short-term rental websites in the town of Southhold, uh, including Greenport Village. Hmm. Uh, and uh, their enforcement mechanism, basically they had to like, they would only, it would only be triggered if someone complained about a rental and then they would have to send the code enforcement officer out to find the people renting the property and get an affidavit from them saying how long they were renting it for and what they paid and, and then see if they could get that through the courts. So it's, it really hasn't been effective. Uh, so the task force came up with a recommendation that would um, <clears throat> actually create a permitting process for rentals of less than 30 days. And mm. one of the things they found out in their research was that there are 40 properties that are managed by four management companies in the town. So, so um, 40 of these rentals are um, either like one LLC or one property management company is, is managing um, 
uh, well, four, four total companies are managing 40 properties, which, you know, this the intent, you know, people keep saying, well, I want a little extra ink. People who are proponents of it were saying, I need a little extra income. This is how I'm funding my retirement, all these kinds of things. But these... <sighs> These four companies. These are investment properties investment for these Investment properties people. for these people, yes. Yeah. So so the the town plan or the task force recommendation, and this would still have to go through public hearings before the town board, is to um uh give out permits for people who want to rent in their primary residence. And they would have like occupancy requirements, they would have to have a waste management plan, they'd have to have safety inspections, all that kind of thing, and to um allow um, a, a a lottery for non-primary residents, um, short-term rentals. So they would cap it at one percent of the properties in each hamlet. And this is kind of like a a tricky mechanism, and I don't know how it would work in practice. Um, but they um would have to limit it to one per corporation or one per person who is a um principal in that corporation. So uh, this hasn't gone to public hearing yet. Um, it it is a little unwieldy to manage. Um, and I think their their starting point would be to um use the software, uh the Granicus software that Suffolk County is using because it's it's Suffolk County wants to collect hotel taxes on this these rentals. Uh so that's another thing that people aren't paying right now. But one of the things they found in their research was that the average income for each property per year was over $107,000. Wow. Um, which was kind of staggering. Um, yeah, I mean, the the short-term rental websites, the Airbnbs and VBROs, um, uh, do I have that right? VBRO? I think that was one uh, of them. VRBO. VBR, VRBO. <laughs> uh, I knew it didn't sound right. Um, they have really changed the landscape, though, haven't they? In the last, what, five, 10 years, l- less than 10 years, um, the short term rentals was never really such an issue in this region. But boy, they just exploded with those uh, websites. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, when you're looking at the price of a hotel room in South Old, I mean, you're you're looking at 800 a thousand sometimes more per night for just a little room and so many people have weddings here and people come out to go to the weddings and it's like you're you're bankrupting your family if you want to have a wedding on the north fork and have to come out here unless unless you want to pay for a black hotel rooms for them so uh you know and then people can't come back and visit their families either so there there is some there is some um benefit to having them in the community but and you you pointed out the other argument for them is that it allows people it it is it is a form of affordable housing in the sense that people can make their own houses a little more affordable by renting out rooms renting the 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 entire place out for a couple of weeks a year here and there make make a little money it makes it a little more it makes it a little easier to be able to afford to live here, right? That's part of the argument that instead of just outright banning, people would like to find that sweet spot where you can let people do some short-term rentals because it has some benefit to the community. I, in in theory, um, I, I'm a little concerned because this this proposed Southold has really um, been anti-affordable housing complex, and they think the town's position seems to be we're going to get there with accessory dwelling units, but if you're allowing an unlimited number of short-term rentals in, pre- in personal um, primary residence properties, that takes away all the incentive to build an a- affordable ADU if you if you can legally rent it out short term. So uh, these are like uh, I think so. It, so it would it would it would it would go to short-term rentals rather than 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 blue-collar workers who would need a place to stay. You're not creating a housing unit, you're creating a short-term rental, which is which is completely different. Yeah. So so the town, you know, has these both both these goals that seem to be kind of mutually um unfeasible. So I mean it's the same same physical space if you own a house and you have to bring it up to code, um you have to weigh the economics of it. And I don't see how um how renting them out through the ADU program is going to um, win in that. For for a limited, for a limited amount of rent that you could make, as opposed to the hundred and some thousand dollars you could make um, 
with with short term rentals. Yeah. So so that'll be interesting to see how that conversation plays out. There are no public hearings scheduled yet on it, um, but they just released this report. And uh, we'll see we'll see what the feedback is. I, I haven't heard and, much. And Southfold is not alone in dealing with this, right? They are yeah. they're one of only, you know, they're one of many towns that are that are dealing with this issue. So how they deal with it may may have some impact on how some other communities decide to deal with it too. No, yeah. Southfield may be a little different just because you've got all those all those those hotels or the motels um up there. You, I mean you've got a lot of, of of those transient rooms, right? I mean as opposed not to lot. not a lot. Mm-hmm. I don't know the I don't know the number off the top of my head. I, yeah. but, um but there's not a lot. And, more, um, more than more than other areas, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an interesting uh, the the conflict there is really interesting, and I don't think we figured out the solution to it just yet. But yeah. interesting that Southwold is is working on that. Yeah. Let me switch gears. Um, the governor Kathy Hochul was in Montauk this last week, Bill, and she came with her checkbook. Right, the state <laughs> she had some state money to to hand out for a couple of different projects. She she did. She um she she brought a check for two point five million dollars, um which which was uh, very welcomed by by East Hampton Town government. That was for the restoration of the dune system at Ditch Plains Beach in Montauk, which uh, which we've written about a little bit. It was um you know three storms last winter devastated the beach and the dunes, and and uh, that wasn't included in the. Uh, in the FIMP work, um, you know, the Fire Island Montauk Point work. And and so the town kind of had to fund that on its own. And and so that state money, um, you know, really helps. She also brought a, a grant for uh, for the retreat. Um, that was uh, 400 and some thousand dollars to uh, to help the retreat. And I have um, to say, before you move on, I, yeah. I, I was really sort of struck by um, she spoke very uh, candidly about the fact that um, this was an important issue to her because her mother had been in, in, involved in a domestic violence situation. And, and you rarely hear a, a, uh, an elected official talk about personal stuff quite at that level. Right. Kind of humanized her a little bit, I, I think, which was yeah. uh, you know, good to see. And, you know, the interesting thing, I mean, she she visited she visited um, one of the retreats shelters. And I mean, she had this, you know, when she was when she was out last, I think it was last Friday. Um, you know, it was a big press event and, you know, the press was following her around. But but when she went to the retreat, she kept that kind of private and they just released that as kind of a separate, um, you know, a separate press release. After the fact, I mean, a couple of days later, which um, which I thought was kind of interesting, too, that, you know, kind of respected the privacy of the people at the shelter and didn't bring the press along. Um, well, the location know, of the shelter of is a secret, too. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just, you know. <laughs> and also she she also um, had some money for Greenport, right, Beth? I, I... Yeah. Mitchell Park, the, the centerpiece park in Greenport um, had a skating rink for many years. I think it, I think it went up there about. Um, 20 years ago and um and a nice skating rink that was set up in the winter time and uh there were a, a lot of local um leagues were playing there and it was kind of a, a good counterpoint to a car- uh, antique carousel that's also in the park there uh so that's kind of fallen into disrepair lately it's been hard to keep the ice frozen because it's not that cold um, but, uh, so she brought a check, I believe for $1.2 million for the skating rink, which hmm. sounds like a lot of money. But... This is a, this is a time of year where we get a lot of officials coming in to the region <laughs> and they leave with bags of money. Um, this is one time <laughs> yeah. the governor left some bags of money, which is kind of nice for a change. Yeah. Um, Definitely. She also addressed affordable housing and she, she designated East Hampton, a pro housing community, which is the first community, I believe, on Long Island to get the that first town on Long Island. Um, I'm sorry, Fort Village was six more than six months ago. Yeah, first town, I mean, you know first that. town. Greenport was yeah. Greenport beat them to the punch again. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, she can come anytime, right? <laughs> as long as she has her checkbook, I think everybody is happy to see her come. No question. <laughs> You, so you see, we have just you see, that, you see that a lot, I guess, during election years where where people come out and, you know, and, and give these grants. But that doesn't mean that it's um, any less well received and, and certainly um, 
um, certainly needed. Yeah, and it's worth pointing out that the Ditch Plains money has a lot to do with erosion, which has a lot to do with climate change. And she made a point that it's time to start spending money on those projects. It's not just about the threats. Uh, the, the real problems are starting to happen already. Uh, it's the new normal, as she put it. So um, that's something. Um, before we wrap up here, we only have a little bit of time left, but um, there was some news about Vale Levitt. Um, Alec, do you want to take that? What's what's going on with the with with the theater in Riverhead? Sure. So the historic uh, Vale Levitt Music Hall in, in Riverhead, a building from the uh, built in the late uh, 19th century. Um, <clears throat> It um, recently came back into the town's possession. The uh, a nonprofit organization had run it for many years and, uh, you know, maintained the building, but um, town officials ended up taking it back. Um, and uh, now they're in talks with um, the Jazz Loft, which is a Stony Brook-based nonprofit um, that uh, also renovated a historic building in um, Stony Brook Village and made it into a performance space and a jazz mm. memorabilia museum. And so they're in talks um, with getting the jazz loft um, to come to Riverhead and to lease the Vale of a music hall to the jazz loft um, to, uh, you know, work on the restoration of it, to have performances there. And um, so it's uh, a revitalization project that um, town officials really want to see happen. I, uh, um, the Vale of it got a uh, $250,000 grant last year from um, Suffolk County, one of the uh, the downtown um, grant programs that they do um, for the renovation of the building. The building's going to need a, a new roof. That's a big expense. You know, it's in a state of disrepair. Um, but there's hope that the Jazz Loft will be able to come in and... Um, do significant work on it and also get it sort of going as a performing arts venue. Um, there had, you know, been sort of consistent performances at the Vale of it for a while, kind of stopped during COVID and, uh, you know. Um, it's a it, great, a great um, venue, though. It is. It's a real treasure, I think. It's, it's very pretty. pretty. Yeah. It's good. It's to a very pretty uh, I, I hope that be- works out because it would be good to see it really renovated and, and utilized utilized yeah, exactly. yeah that, that somebody's going to have a, a good use for it and you know there isn't really much um it'd be an opportunity to get a real presence of a jazz club of some sort too which would be kind of neat too um just to add to the club for all that, that, that kind, of, kind of that that dark uh jazzy kind of atmosphere doesn't it absolutely very cool cool stuff we'll keep an eye on that then uh we're out of time for this week i want to thank our guests beth young of the east end beacon alec lewis of riverhead local and the civiletti of riverhead local thank you guys for being with us this morning thanks also to my co-host bill sutton uh for being here this morning i'm joe shaw uh we will be back next week with another edition of behind headlines thanks everybody 